practice are too important. Practice is zazen uh, practice and uh, to uh, listen to your uh, teacher or uh, right uh, teaching. <coughs> And this is uh, uh, just like uh, uh, two waves of uh, ego. Without uh, practice, uh, you cannot uh, understand uh, teaching. You cannot listen to uh, your teacher. And without practice, uh, without uh, listening uh, to your teacher, your practice uh, will be uh, cannot be right practice. Right practice, by right practice, we mean uh, practice, <coughs> fundamental practice, from which you can uh, start Uh, from which various teaching uh, will uh, come out. So, uh, from uh, right practice, if you have right practice, uh, you have already right teaching there. So, right practice is the foundation of all uh, Buddhist activity. Right practice. It, is, it cannot be compared to uh, various practice um, or training. Uh, there are many uh, ways of uh, Zen practice. There are many uh, practice, uh, Zazen practice, meditation practice. But our uh, practice is cannot be compared uh, to uh, other uh, practice. I don't say which is important uh, or which is uh, better. But anyway, without foundation, various practice does not work. So if you uh, practice some uh, particular practice which has no foundation, your practice, you will be eventually you know, mm, uh, fall into a pit hole. You will be caught by it, and you will lose your freedom. Uh, but if you have, uh, but if you have the foundation, uh, to your various practice, the various practice will work and will help you. The right practice uh, will mean that kind of uh, foundation of practice. <coughs> it is not. It is more than practice. So. When you have 
foundation to your practice, even though your practice is not perfect, it will help you. Ah, that is uh, right practice. And what is right, if you want to know actually what is right practice, as I told you, uh, <coughs> uh, it is uh, necessary to, uh, to practice with right teacher, to understand what is a right practice. Mm-hmm. And uh, right practice is also uh, foundation of uh, precepts. precepts. When you do not have right practice, uh, you will hesitate to accept precepts. But if you have right practice, you can accept precepts. Whatever the precepts may be, you can accept it. (coughs) So, uh, precepts For the people who have the right practice, is called Bodhisattva precepts, in comparison to uh, some other uh, so-called Hinayana practice, uh, precepts. It is quite different. <coughs> the way of observing is quite different. Mm, last night I uh, talked about little bit about it, Mm. I said, if you you do something good, you cannot, (laughs) you cannot, you have no time to do something bad. That is how you keep uh, precepts. Why we say body sattva is a place? It is based on body sattva mind. As you know, body sattva is mind is to save others, sentient, all sentient beings before you, know, you save uh, yourself, that is, Bodhisattva mind. To, to save others is first, and to save ourselves is next. Or uh, we said, mm. body, sattva, mind, body, sattva, mind. <coughs> body, sattva, mind is spirit. To uh, devote ourselves uh, in uh, saving others. How you then, you know, how you arise uh, bodhisattva mind will be the uh, next point. You will uh, ask me how you arise the bodhisattva mind. <coughs> well, 
you, many people ask me you know, about this point. Uh, how would they, uh, you know, the question would be you know, something like this, you know. I have uh, various uh, problems, and you say, you always say, you should not, you know, try to attain enlightenment. You should not involve the in, uh, selfish you know, practice. If so, you know, to try to save others is also you know, uh, you know, a gaining idea you know, because you have some purpose or some uh, you know, idea of doing something. So that will not be uh, actually bodhisattva mind. Actually, uh, we will have this kind of question mm. always. Uh, to, you know, to practice pure way, you start to try to do something to help us. But you may, you know, wonder whether you are doing something to help others or to help yourself. <laughs> it is very difficult to know which, you know. <coughs> I think you may uh, suffer uh, on this point a lot as I did when I was young. You know. Whatever I try, you know, while I'm trying, continuing uh, doing something, more and more, you know, I feel, you know, I lose my confidence. For instance, you know, if you uh, clean a restaurant you know, as your task, everyday task, you get up before uh, your friend gets up and you clean your, uh, uh, our restaurant so that no one, if you, uh, why uh, we get up so early is to, you know, to keep our practice pure so that we might, may not be involved in selfish practice, you know. So if, you know, no one can see uh, our practice, then if my, only my mind is pure, you know, the fear practice will go on. But when you see, you know, when uh, someone see you doing something, you know, immediately some conflict arises, especially if he is your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know how to feel. <coughs> the feeling is very complicated. 
in one way, you know, you uh, be glad to be found out by your <laughs> teacher. And <coughs> on the other hand, you may feel very bad when you uh, feel uh, when you have a kind of good feeling or joy of being found out by someone. Now, <laughs> what you are doing? <coughs> this kind of problem is the problem you have already. So it is not so easy to arise, you know, body, of or mind. <coughs> it is not so easy at all. Why it is difficult is, you know, uh, because uh, you do not have right teacher, or because you do not have exactly how you arise bodhisattva mind. <coughs> uh, answer is very simple. <laughs> very simple, but uh, I think it is good for you to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> on this point, or else, you know, your practice will be very, very superficial. <coughs> of course, you know, try to save others as the body, you may say, bodhisattva practice, but if something impure you know, uh, uh, element in it, you cannot have confidence in your practice. Mm. <laughs> mm. I know many students you know, who, are, who have this kind of, uh, you know, uh, mm. conflict, a problem. <coughs> anyway, I think I have to uh, explain. <laughs> Uh, since I started to talk about uh, this point. Uh, Dogen then says, mind, what is mind? There are three kinds of mind. <coughs> but Usually, by mind, we mean thinking mind. Thinking mind is mind, usually, you know. And with this jyotishim, or thinking mind, we must arise body supper mind. This is very variable. And this is a great help for us. Yeah. Usually, you, know, you may think, 
after you attain enlightenment. When your mind is very clear, and when you have no more uh, <coughs> dualistic thinking mind, you will arise Bodhisattva mind. <laughs> but Dohen Zen did not say so. He clearly said there are three kinds of mind. First of all, we have thinking mind, dualistic mind. With this dualistic mind, you should arise Bodhisattva mind. Why you have you know, <clears throat> why you are confused in doing uh, in helping others and why you suffer you know, when you reflect on yourself on your mind it's you know, because it is almost impossible to uh, be uh, free from dualistic, you know, uh, thinking mind and emotional, you know, and superficial mind. But Dorian then says, you know, with that mind, you should arise. Bodhisattva mind. Uh, yesterday and the day before uh, yesterday night, I told you whatever you know uh, your practice may be, that it's true practice. Whatever your mind situation, you know, may be, with that mind you can arise. Perfect bodhisattva mind, he said. You know, this is why doge is doge. This is why we must have dog as the uh, Zen master. <coughs> Sometimes what he says is quite unusual and so unusual that you may be confused. What is he saying with dualistic mind? You should arise, Bodhisattva mind. Then why do we practice that? <laughs> there will not be no need to practice that. If we, it is possible to arise, Bodhisattva mind, with dualistic thinking mind. If it is possible for us you know, <coughs> to arise Bodhisattva mind and to receive uh, Bodhisattva precept, <coughs> then, you know, you should receive it, even though you have your practice is not so good. And you are involved in always dualistic uh, thinking mind or emotional activities. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, our practice is, as I always repeat, our practice is not same practice, uh, some practice, which you can explain completely, <coughs> which is our practice is something beyond our understanding. And he says, Bodhisattva mind, how we arise Bodhisattva mind is to know the teaching that everything changes. Everything changes. It's absolutely true. <laughs> you cannot deny it. <laughs> so you should know completely you know, the uh, accept completely that teaching. Everything changes. So, you know, originally things are changing. So, you know, no one can say in its, in its ordinary sense, I can observe this precept forever. You cannot say so anyway. <coughs> Even so, you attain enlightenment. That is not possible. No one can be sure about anything. And, you know, <coughs> what, but how is it then possible? to say, I will observe it. And, you know, moment after moment, at least on that moment, you should say, yes, I will. On that moment, that moment includes its own past and future. That moment will be extended <coughs> to uh, four directions and past and future. That is also true. So, <coughs> as you practice that, you know, you should say, I will do it without, you know, being involved in the uh, doubt whether you can observe it forever or not. It is, there's no need from the beginning, you know, <laughs> to say, you know, no, I cannot. You cannot say so. When you, you know, really see things as it is, there's no position for you to say no. The only way is yes, I will. That's all what you can do. understand uh, evanescence of life will be at the same time how to arise uh, how to arise body sattva mind <coughs> so, so body sattva mind is not 
you know, dualistic thinking mind. This point is also Dolan Denji point out. Dualistic, you know, confused mind is not Bodhisattva mind. But our even our confused mind uh, is good enough to receive, to uh, inspiration from the uh, truth, from the Buddha. Good enough. So when you, you know, your dualistic mind receives that inspiration, at that time you are Buddha. You cannot say no. I, I will not care. You. And it, that is very true. You cannot care. But it does not mean, you know, <clears throat> in its ordinary sense, whether you will kill or not. And continuously, you know, you, uh, moment after moment, if you say, I will not, then that is how you uh, keep a uh, precept. <clears throat> so in short, to, to have always bodhisattva mind is how you keep a uh, precept. And if you receive a uh, precept in that way, that is bodhisattva precept. When you work on, the, on your garden, there may be various insects. <laughs> what will you do? <laughs> if you understand, you know, what you are doing is bodhisattva activity, you know, then sometimes you will care. By killing insects, you will go to hell. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. <laughs> you will go to hell with insects. <laughs> That is Bodhisattva physics. <laughs> 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 because you want to be perfect Buddha, and instead of Bodhisattva, you have problems. <laughs> So when you receive precept, first of all, you, what you should know is everything is changing. <coughs> and next point is this precept is bodhisattva precept. By observing it, we will help others first of all. So, whether you kill fly or insect or not is 
up to the situation. <laughs> no one wants to kill anything, but <coughs> to save others, you know, to fulfill your duty, sometimes you must. When you are uh, at the Sahara, when, when you are taking care of your garden, you know, if you come back, when, <laughs> when you see many insects, <laughs> for example, and practice that, <laughs> we can, no, we cannot do anything at the Sahara. <laughs> so all of us will get into trouble. He may be okay because he didn't kill anything, so he's perfect. <laughs> but all the people, because of that, we uh, get into difficulties. That is not Bodhisattva, and that is not uh, <coughs> true spiritual precept. Bodhisattva mind <coughs> Some may say, you know, uh, say say to you, I I knew I was I bow to save them. If it is innumerable, <laughs> how is it possible to save them? But the Bodhisattva way continues forever. So Bodhisattva <coughs> will go with Bodhisattva mind forever. So this kind of mind is not <clears throat> of course, our thinking mind. It is beyond our thinking mind. But you know, even in our dualistic thinking mind, bodhisattva mind, you know, like um, you know, on the water, will reflect. on it, on our mind. That is so called, you know, Kanno uh, Doko, it is, you know. Now you may say it is, or sometimes you may say uh, it's great. You, even in confused mind, Buddha is there. Even in Madhu, you know, mm. now waving water may be there. So, if Bodhisattva mind rejects Madhu, waving water, That is not you know, Bodhisattva mind, which includes, which, you know, trying to save everything. <coughs> Whether it is good or bad, anyway, Bodhisattva mind will make uh, uh, his effort to save. And because it is almost impossible that the Bodhisattva mind will continue its activity forever. And it will not stop.
Stop. You can incessantly work in everything. So that kind of mind, of course, is not our dualistic small mind, but relationship between our mind and deep mind is very you know, close. You cannot separate. The moon in the sky, the moon in the water, you can look at the same quality, although it is small, you know, uh, even a Buddha for the mind of the moon is there. Don't you then point at this point? <coughs> So, body you know, at first, did not accept his disciples' practice, but after, you know, trying very hard, and his mind became, or uh, he gave up. Practice of uh, perfect, perfect. Mm. Then, okay, he's pretty good. His practice is mature enough. So he didn't say anything. Okay, when you understand what I mean, you are my disciple. But uh, does your practice, you know, has time to stop it, stop, or does it continue forever? So the said, it, of course it will continue forever. <coughs> there is no other way. So anyway, I have to go this way. And Bodhisattva said, then who are you? You are my disciple or you are deluded? Mm. Uh, you are not my disciple because you cannot observe our way completely. So you, are, you may not be my disciple. But you are always trying to follow my way. So maybe <laughs> who you are. Or maybe not. <laughs> you cannot say yes or no. So he said, you know, I know myself very well after trying so hard. And there's no other way for me to go. That is me. So I cannot say who I am, your disciple or I, uh, not your disciple. I cannot say which. And Bodhidharma said, that is the way <coughs> or the Bodhisattva or the Patriarch. How? They observe our way. <laughs> that is the Bodhisattva way. So we, if it, we call it by name of precepts, or you know, as a way of life, that is you know, Bodhisattva precepts. And you can say that it's way seeking mind or a bodhisattva way.
बधाई सी बधाई सी माइंड बधाई एज यू नो ताव वे सिंकिंग माइंड He, though he did know it, still you may not understand. So he <laughs> started to, you know, uh, started to write many pages after that. How things change, you know. How, you know, uh, useless to say forever or right now. But today or uh, uh, one month, one week, or mo- one month. <laughs> to, for dog and dog, it doesn't mean anything. One day, one week. One month, one year, ten year, it doesn't make any difference for him. When things change so rapidly <clears throat> and constantly, it does not make any sense. I am, you know, sixteen. Six years old, <laughs> but I don't feel I am so old. <laughs> you know, you so you know, sixty-six years is you know just like this, and for you, maybe. <laughs> Uh, 20 years or 30 years, maybe like this. Same thing. <coughs> and in uh, some sort of how, in how time goes uh, fast, how fast time goes with various power. <coughs> You may say, light is, in, in scripture say, the light of the sun and moon is going very fast, like this, you know. It is, we, you know, count. When we count the speed, you know, speed of light is zero. Zero or absolute, but uh, in scripture uh, says there's something which is controlling the light. <laughs> that speed should be faster than the speed of light, and there's uh, some God who is controlling. <laughs> over uh, something which is controlling right. <laughs> that you know, speed must be faster than that. And you know, the uh, you know, name various God who is controlling over uh, various uh, uh, God one after another. And uh, it says, actually, things co- change faster than that. <laughs> so you will give up, you know, oh my. <laughs> and so you shouldn't say, I can keep it, or I cannot.
So best thing is, yes, I will. That is best answer. You say, you know, you cannot say so. If you say, if you are able to say, you cannot say, why don't you say yes? That is much easier. And that is much, that word is uh, very truthful to yourself. Yes, I cannot. No one can say so. <laughs> but yes, I will. Right now, at least, that is it. It is very true. But I cannot. You know, when you say, I cannot, you should take the responsibility. How you carry on that responsibility of great Buddha. It is, you know. <laughs> I cannot say. You know. So, the only thing will be give him a big slap. <laughs> Throw him in the ocean. <laughs> I cannot say, you know. I cannot do that. It's very difficult to ask. Yes, I can. It's, if you understand how things is going and what you are doing, it is much truthful to you to say, yes. But people think, if he say, no, no. He thinks he is very truthful to himself. <laughs> Opposite. You may understand how arrogant we are <clears throat> when we say, I cannot. That is, you know, how we accept precepts. And how we arise, we are seeking mind with this, you know, foolish mind, small mind. This is the only one way for us. after, you know, great efforts of various teachers, of various schools, this is the conclusion. You may say, Zen is quite, you know, Special Zen teaching is special teaching among all the teaching in Buddhism. So we have some special way of observing precepts, but there's no other way. Doi Zenji was great, you know. As a Zen master, after practicing so hard, without doing anything, completely devoted his uh, 40, uh, 54 years of life, and come to this conclusion, and wrote about it, so that you know, our Zen students 
สุดนภาพเอเน่บรองไอเดีย about this point so when we come to this point there's no soto or no rinzai or no shin school or no zen school To say, you know, to explain in this way, it's uh, not so maybe uh, not so difficult. But the more you try hard to uh, to be truthful to yourself, the more you find out how true uh, this teaching is. So, you know, I'm not fooling you. So, you you should say, you should just say yes. <laughs> I will. <laughs> That is the secret of observing the p e o p l And that is, you know, how you follow our uh, rules. Then you will be polished up day by day. Your practice will be mature. 